so I was kind of expecting to need to do this. This video is a follow-up to my video on death battles that are wrong based on their own logic, and yes, I did end up naming the video that, and even though I said I wouldn't, I went with it anyway. I go watch that video first, and then come back to this one. So, this video is going to be a follow-on, uh, based on some, some episodes people suggested in the comments. The first thing I want to clarify though, once again, is the theme of this video. There seems to be some confusion, which I did expect. Namely, people like bring up death battles that they consider just wrong outright. Or death battles that bring things up that are wrong. For instance, uh, Android 18 absorbing energy. It wasn't brought up, even though I did bring up 18 vs Captain Marvel. And it is wrong, Android 18 does not absorb energy. However, instances of just being wrong about a thing aren't the theme at all unless it's relevant. There would be too many small minor mistakes to bring up, and I don't think this video really would be helped out if I bring up that Hawkeye's weight is measured in feet and inches. This isn't a video of just various miscellaneous mistakes, but episodes that I think were not explained in a way to adequately represent why the winner won based solely on the evidence brought up in the episode. And I want to bring that up, and I think this is nitpicky. People use the word nitpick a lot to disregard criticism. While I do understand some people don't particularly care about those criticisms, and I think that's fair, I don't think it's fair to class any criticism as a nitpick. When I criticize the death battle, I am completely fine if people disagree and they think it's not that big an issue. However, it's a bit off if they just go, Oh, you think this massive part of the episode's bad? You're just nitpicking. Who cares? Who cares if this massive chunk of the animation looks shit to you? That five minutes, that's a nitpick. If there's an issue with how a character is portrayed or with the choreography or the sprites used in an animation, it's not a nitpick because that would imply that those are not very important elements of a death battle. Especially characters being portrayed accurately. People, why, why do people say that's not important? How would you feel if they used Batman again, but he was written as a bumbling idiot who doesn't know any martial arts and speaks in Swahili? How would you feel if we got a second episode with Spider-Man, where he acts like Doctor Doom? People who just think it's not important as long as it's well choreographed help emphasize my point even. If you don't know a character, you won't care how well they're portrayed. If you do know a character, you're gonna care. Nobody goes into a Spider-Man death battle wanting to see a character with Spider-Man's powers who is not Spider-Man. They go in because they like Spider-Man as a character. You should write your episode to please everyone. If someone's a fan of Goku, they want to see Goku, not just some rando with Goku's power set. They're more than just functions, if you know what I'm saying. And like, when I say, oh man, this animation is janky. Oh, you're just nitpicking. Nitpicking? That's the entire animation! The entire animation having an issue counts as a nitpick? Since when did nitpick lose any meaning as a term? At this point, it's gonna be like, oh, I think the whole episode's bad. You're just a nitpicker. The whole episode is just a small part of the thing. As for this particular subject, I don't... I, I, I don't know. I didn't go into this necessarily intending for it to be criticism of Death Battle. Though it kind of is, it's strange, because this is a criticism-based topic. I'm criticizing the way they portray information. But personally, I didn't go in intending to criticize Death Battle, it was just, hey, here are some fun little things that Death Battle did wrong. But I still wouldn't consider it a nitpick, because the entire purpose of the show is to answer who would win in a fight. That is what everything on the show revolves around. Saying that the conclusion is internally inconsistent is a nitpick. Once again, are you implying that the conclusion, the post-analysis that puts everything together into one, is just something that's you, if you have a problem with this nitpicking. It's not that important to the death battle, it's only what the entire show revolves around. If you removed the conclusion from death battle and made the conclusion on its own, uh, its whole video, if, you had, if death battle got rid of everything beyond the conclusion, it would still be death battle. You'd still have the hosts and it would still be answering the question of who wins. However, if you removed everything but the analysis, so you just had the analysis, it would no longer be death battle. It would just be a video on two characters and how strong they are, but there would be no comparison between them. If you just had the animation, it wouldn't be answering who would win, it would just be a fun animation between two characters fighting. And the winner would, as far as we know, just be decided by personal preference. It'd be no different to a DBX at that point. The conclusion is what makes Death Battle, Death Battle. It's what makes versus shows, versus shows. The conclusion is where you make, the, where you compare the characters. It is the most important part of a Death Battle because it is what Death Battle is about. If it's not up to snuff, that's not nitpicking! That is a major part! That would be like if you had Star Wars, but every scene involving the Empire was bad. 
and you say, well, it's a nitpick. The Empire is not a big part of Star Wars. No, that's stupid. Regardless, I'm not here to shit talk Death Battle. I do love Death Battle. I'm doing this video for fun. I thought it was a fun topic to talk about. So let's get into this. Now, first, I want to bring up two entries that not everyone seems to agree with. The first one is Power Rangers vs. Voltron, which I even said in the video doesn't really fit because it's just a matter of what you want to go with based on what they said. However, people like to bring up that they said Serpentero used half its power, which would be half plant level, and blew the Thunder Megazord apart. And while that's true, keep in mind that one tenth of half of a planet bust is way above the number they gave the comet. That comet, to, to be that weak, the Dino Megazord would need to be billions of times weaker than a planet bust. Probably more than billions. If you say the Thunder Megazord is a thousand times above the Dino Megazord, and half of the Serpent Terror is a thousand times above the Thunder Megazord, which it wouldn't be, because if it was, the Thunder Megazord would have been vaporized, and it wasn't, the Thunder Megazord was not completely obliterated, even if it was beaten down. That's how, that's how weak you would need to be for the Dino Megazord to not be above that particular number. Now, I'm not going to say necessarily whether or not this is accurate, in terms of objectively, or... Eh, versus debating is not really often objective, but in terms of, does the Dino Megazord get to planet level? That's not the point. The point is, Serpentero used half its power, the Thunder Megazord was not completely destroyed, and the Dino Megazord would have to be billions of times weaker to come close to that number. It would need to downscale ridiculously. However, once again, the problem is that the number they gave is not indicative of where they obviously put the comet. The comet, they put a planet busting, meaning that they would put Voltron a planet busting. The number's just way too small. There do seem to be some people who think that they were talking about the energy the comet was putting onto other planets. No. The idea that Voltron being closer means he was taking more energy than that was given off is wrong. It would actually be less because of the surface area of Voltron, obviously not being the same as the surface area of the comet. He would only be taking in so much of that energy. However, I think the thing is that... First off, they should have been explained if that was what they were going for. They didn't go. They didn't explain it all. But what they said was that the comet affects planets within a certain radius, which would require this much power for it to be generating. They were not saying that it's generating that much energy on the planets, especially because then, like, it would be generating country levels of energy to destroy planets. That's not how that works. That would imply that it takes a long time for it to destroy a planet, which would make Voltron even less impressive. However, what they were doing was essentially saying a nuke has a radius of this range, and this is how much energy it would need to output to be that large. And yes, I'm aware this is arguable, because if you go with the statement they said, they said Planet Busting Comet, Dino Megazord downscales quite a bit from half of planet level, Voltron would win. And yes, I do think that you could easily argue that. I think that it was not in the video because it necessarily fit, but more it was there because it was interesting to talk about. It's weird, Death Battle likes to give us numbers that don't match the level of power they're discussing. Like, when they bring up universal um, levels of power. It's always multi-galaxy levels of energy. It's weird. Sable versus John Talbane, meanwhile, is the other one. Now, this was a little bit, maybe a bit stretchy a bit, but I wasn't criticizing the episode because of it, I want to say. The thing is that if I knew nothing about Darkstalker scaling, but I knew about verse debating, how would I believe John won based on this episode? Nothing else. QB here is giving lifting strength, not attack potency, and Anakaris is moving a lot of mass, but they don't say how much energy it takes. It's just a thing with me. If you bring up a feat that's not in units of energy, how am I supposed to compare that to units of energy? How do you compare hitting someone with one kiloton of TNT, lifting 30 million tons of mass, and sinking 1.2 trillion tons of mass? The second one you need a time frame for to give an energy number. And the third thing is just weird. They could have given us the calculate. There is a calculation that shows you how much energy Anakaris took to sink it, and it is higher than a kiloton. But if you don't know that, and you're paying enough attention, it's just confusing. You would have a lot of trouble convincing me John Talbain has higher attack potency if you use nothing but this episode without bringing in external things. If you start saying something like, well, QB was moving at this speed, you've gone beyond what Death Battle gave. The moment you say the energy it takes to sink 1.2 trillion tons is, you've gone beyond what Death Battle gave because they did not give an energy value to either of these things. Saberwolf should be stronger based on this episode because John Talbain's attack potency doesn't exist. I understand that people are going to be like, well, obviously, seeking Egypt's bigger, but then he could have just destroyed the foundations underneath and then caused a chain reaction, you know? He didn't, but he could have. <laughs> just because you sink that, like, a person 
can knock down a building, that doesn't mean they're going to scale. Or th just because you can... I mean, even then, what would you scale to? Building level? No. If you use something and you knock the building down, you just knock off once underneath it, and then it causes a chain reaction and falls. You know, you can do that. <laughs> That's something you can do. There's a difference between that and blowing up a building, just punching it to bits. So yeah, I think that its own internal consistency is just weird. And once again, remember, this has nothing to do with if I believe the episode was correct or not. My subjective opinion on who should have won. It is based on whether or not the winner was accurate, solely on the evidence given. Nothing external. No, no, this is how much energy it took to sink Egypt. No, this is how fast QB was moving. No, well, actually, Android 18, yada, yada, yada. Nothing like that. So let's talk about the episodes people wanted to bring up in the comments. And of course, I expected this, the big one, Ben 10 versus Greenland. Now, the reason this one didn't make it on the video is simple. It's explained like shit, but the episode does have evidence for Hal's victory. Alien X has put it universal, while up here, Hal has put it 10 times universal. As for speed, they fucked up a little bit. Alien X was put at 7 quadrillion times the speed of light. Hal Jordan was put at 1.5 quintillion times the speed of light. That would make Hal 214 times faster than Alien X. However, here they say that Hal is 750 times faster. Uh, if he was that much faster, he'd be 5 quintillion, 250 quadrillion times the speed of light. Which, as you might notice, is a 3.5 times difference to where they actually put him. And maybe they're referring to another feat, but they didn't... I don't remember them bringing it up at all. I watched the video, I didn't see them bring up a feat that's 5 quintillion times the speed of light. And it's not the fucking missiles that search the universe. That gets way higher. Regardless, they had Hal 200 times faster and 10 times stronger, and they brought up his resistances to Alien X's hacks with adequate explanation. Where the episode failed isn't in its internal consistency on a technical level, but just the explanation is worded very poorly. Instead of bringing up verbally that Hal Jordan's attack potency is comparable or higher, they instead do a really bad attempt at a soft debunk of Universal Alien X, even though they put feedback at uni already, I doubt they would put feedback above Alien X. That bullshit about he couldn't stop it in the first place. First off, it's, it's just wrong. From what I hear, it's just objectively wrong. That's not what happened in the episode. But even if you ignore that, you take away external factors and you look solely at what they said, they already put Alien X and universe levels of power. This is irrelevant. They didn't outright state the speed difference either, meaning if you weren't paying attention to the corners or you didn't read them in time, Attack, potency, and speed, something that's very important to this matchup, just weren't brought up. They were just brought up in the corners. And they list off a bunch of things Alien X can't resist. Now, this isn't a problem with internal consistency. They never say Alien X can, can resist this, and then later say, actually, he can't. But, for people who knew Alien X well enough to know it was wrong, it set off alarms. But once again, that's bringing in external factors to the death battle, as opposed to just looking at what's in the death battle. The evidence for Hal's victory is in the episode, it's just worded badly. And they didn't focus on relevant things in the conclusion. And obviously I'm not going to be talking about the fight animation. Yes, the ending is really stupid. Those scissors should not have been animated so slowly. I would have had a sword instead of scissors. I would have had something that's moving a bit faster, more dynamic, instead of literally stopping in place for two seconds before cutting. And yes, I know there's the failsafe right into a Big Bang, but keep in mind the Big Bang is not very fast. <laughs> um, the, the Big Bang moved at the speed of light in the real world, so Hal is a quintillion times faster, Alien X is a quadrillion times faster. But regardless, they should have brought up in the conclusion that they consider Hal faster than the failsafe. So yeah, this is a bad conclusion in a different way. It's got all the stuff in it, but they focus on weird, unnecessary shit and it needed a bit more runtime. It doesn't fit the video, it instead would fit a video of death battles that are explained like shit. Reaver's Scorpion. This one actually probably should have been on the list. I was kind of caught up on how they say Scorpion cannot be killed by Ryu, so the stats don't really matter. However, they said that Ryu can dodge point black gunfire, and don't say anything for Scorpion that would be comparable at all. Based on this, Ryu's Raging Demon, which they admit would kill Scorpion, would be enough to win, because Scorpion is too slow to avoid it. So yes, by their logic, Ryu is stronger, and faster, and has the Raging Demon, and Scorpion's only advantage is that if he's in hell long enough, he can get stronger than Ryu. But that doesn't matter, because he won't even get Ryu to help, because Ryu's too fast to be tagged by him. So yes, Ryu vs Scorpion, that probably should have been on the list. Luigi vs Tails, once again, 
because I gotta bring up when talking about controversial episodes like this. Even if you consider a total bullshit, it does not necessarily mean it's internally false. In this case, the only stat they give in the whole episode that's relevant is that Tails is faster. That Tails has near the speed of sound speeds. That means that Tails is given a speed, neither is given attack potency, both are given lifting strength, but Tails is better. How can you say they did how can you say the evidence in the episode suggests that Luigi win when Tails is the only one with a relevant stat? Joker vs. Sweet Tooth. Probably should have been in the video because it is arguable. Sweet Tooth does outstat according to them, but their argument relied on Joker outsmarting Sweet Tooth and gassing him. And I think it's close, and you could definitely argue it deserves to be in the video. Dante vs. Bayonetta. This one is funny because they did say Bayonetta is physically stronger, but also that she can't kill Dante. The reason it doesn't fit is because they do, according to them, Dante's regeneration is too much of Bayonetta, she can't do anything to kill him. And he's faster. Not only is there the stupid raindrop thing, but he caught up to a sword moving at speeds fast enough to catch on fire, which is more impressive than anything they gave Bayonetta in the episode, which would be dodging point black gunfire. Hilariously though, the numbers they gave at the end for their speeds was completely useless, especially when compared to each other. But really, according to them, Bayonetta is stronger, but Dante is faster and has better regeneration. I've seen people claim they put Bayonetta at town level or planet level, but they didn't actually put a quantifiable number or tier in Bayonetta. They never said, ugh, would have to destroy a town, or this many tons of TNT. They just said she can punch meteors and throw buildings. If you're going to say, well, those meteors are town level, once again, you're bringing in external factors. We really don't know where they ranked them in a raw attack potency beyond that they had Bayonetta higher to an unknown degree. Ryu vs Jin. This one definitely was just a case of people thinking the episode is wrong generally and thus should have been on the list. No. How is Ryu vs Jin wrong by its own logic? According to the episode, Jin's high board level of power in its strongest form is 100 megatons, while Ryu in his base form is 400 megatons. They did have Jin faster, uh, 10 times faster in fact. However, Ryu is four times stronger than Devil Jin's high ball in base without going evil Ryu or the power of fuck all. So based on their own research, the result's pretty accurate. If you want to bring your personal opinions on how strong these two are, that's irrelevant to the video, bye. Carnage vs Lucy, I don't even get why people bring this up. Lucy is given better speeds and better attack potency. How? Venom vs Krona, once again, seriously, once again, no. Venom was given no attack potency feats. He was put at unknown strength and decent speeds. The only stats that aren't lifting strength or black blood creation given to Krona is also speed, and they were given a higher speed than Venom. Seeing as that was the only stat they gave that is relevant to a versus debate, because how much you can lift doesn't actually matter, Krona winning is internally consistent. They also have sound attacks. Virgil vs Sephiroth, once again, the result is internally consistent. While their stats were hilariously low, in fact, some of the lowest in the show's history, Sephiroth was put higher, and while Virgil was put at faster, Sephiroth's healing, raw power, and supernova meant that Virgil was fucked. They did not give Virgil anything that would survive or outpace a supernova. And stop it with bringing in what you think is personally wrong about what they said. Doesn't matter if what they said was wrong, that's irrelevant to the video. Zuko vs Shoto. This one... Okay, this one I did consider, because they didn't give Shoto any stats. Zuko was put at building level, and Shoto wasn't given a number. They were both lightning timers with equivalent speeds, though. I probably should have had it in the video due to the arguable nature of it, um, but at the same time, they outright state that ice block is bigger than a building. Well, they don't say bigger than a building, but they say it's bigger than, like, four kilometers. If you want to, if you want me to believe there's a four kilometer building in the world, the... Sure, maybe Zuko's higher with can destroy buildings, but yeah, I think it's fine. But I mean, I don't. I think it's. I think the conclusion's shit because it's so so unclear. But it's enough to say that if you look into it enough, Shoto deserve the win. Flash versus Sonic. Once again, I seriously, how is this internally inconsistent? Did you guys watch my video? They were put at the same level of yes speed. Wally was put at universal on his own and multiversal with Barry while Archie Sonic was put at small country in base with unknown power in supersonic and multiversal reality warping. Wally should just kill base Sonic or outlast supersonic or just hacks him. They, they pretty much said Flash can avoid all of supersonic's abilities. It's, if anything, what they made it was a stomp. Flash just negates anything Sonic has and outstats him. Sub-Zero vs Glacius. I, what? They had Sub-Zero stronger and he was the only one with a speed feat. 
Gray versus Ezdeath? What? They had them at similar speeds and gave Ezdeath a massive attack potency advantage. And finally, the last one that was suggested, Mario vs. Sonic 2018. Okay, so this one I kind of get. Probably should have brought it up. They outright say that Sonic survives a planet busting explosion in Super. However, they never once suggest this is comparable to his attack power. And when they say Mario can just transmute Sonic to gold to win, it's not wrong. Based on this episode, Sonic is faster, Mario is stronger, Super Sonic is tougher, and Mario's power ups can bypass durability. So internally, it's not wrong. And that was the video. From what I got, there's maybe a couple episodes I should have brought up, one that I just completely missed, and two that I should have explained better. There's one that needed to be brought up due to the subject matter, and a bunch that were just brought up as ones people personally disagreed with as opposed to ones that fit the theme. Watch the video before you suggest what should have been on there. Okay, bye. And obviously I wasn't suggesting Darth Vader vs. Doctor Doom was actually wrong. Doc it's probably one of the biggest stomps in the show's history, but they didn't give Doom anything!